water. It's our most precious natural resource, and when it's threatened, it may take the cooperation of an extraordinary coalition of organizations, which is exactly what happened on one historic day, June 2, 2008, on the San Miguel River in western Colorado. Back in 2001, we decided that more needed to be done to restore the native health of the watersheds throughout the West. And we decided, with the help of the Bureau of Land Management, that the San Miguel, because it's a wild, free-flowing river, was in relatively excellent condition. It's one of the most pristine rivers left in the western United States. Um, very, very few dams or anything like that, a lot of native vegetation. It's a river that's still in fairly good condition, quite frankly, but uh, greatly threatened by the tamarisk and the Russian olive and the Siberian elm. Those three invasives have really choked off the health of the riparian zone, and everything that depends on it has suffered. The riparian zone is the floodplain. That's the simplest way to put it. It's where you periodically get higher waters that spread out and feed a diverse native population of grasses, willows, and cottonwoods. It's what carries the living nutrients and oxygen to the rest of the ecosystem. 90% of wildlife depend upon the riparian zone for food, water, and shelter. That's the majority of wildlife. It's where life happens. The native trees might sink their roots 10 feet into the ground, but the roots of the tamarisk can extend as far down as 100 feet, well into the water table, and consume up to 300 gallons of water per day. This not only threatens the water supply, but also the well-being of the area's wildlife and native plants. It is a, a plant that uh, was imported for irrigation control um, as an aesthetic tree back in the, the last century, in the, in the mid-1800s, and uh, has since spread throughout the West. The tamarisk is incredibly resilient. If the tree is not killed within a few minutes, sap rushes to its rescue and the tree survives and grows back. So the team of volunteers first chainsaws the tamarisks down, then quickly applies herbicide to the stumps. The cut down limbs and stumps are then stacked in piles off to the side. The opportunity to come in here and remove that invasive species through a variety of ways and basically boils down to just a lot of hard work, uh, we, we really have a chance to uh, uh, keep the ecology of this particular river corridor healthy and functioning. One thing that I find very, very rewarding is the marathon shirts and caps and hats that people are wearing. And it's showing the people of Western Colorado that Marathon, as a huge multinational company, definitely can come home, come home to small occupations such as we are here, and we're going to come in and clean up what needs to be done and help the Nature Conservancy do so. NIFWF got involved with this project after talking with Marathon and the Nature Conservancy and their interest in this project, and we talked with our partners at the Bureau of Land Management, who also have an interest because they own part of the land, and also they're interested in removing the tamaris from it. So when all of those partners got together and, and are interested, the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation is also interested. In this particular project, we're really pleased to be working with Marathon Oil, uh, who actually came to us saying, look, we, we want to participate uh, in the state of Colorado in a conservation project. What would you recommend and where could we, where could we help? And uh, we said, well, we got a place for you. Any time that you can bring uh, expertise like Marathon Oil uh, has in, in project management and project design, uh, ecological science like the Nature Conservancy can bring to bear, like the BLM can bring to bear on this, bring our legislators in here and, and help them craft a way to fund this. You've, you've created a coalition of partners that uh, maximizes your opportunity for success. The partnership is critical because it allows us to, to raise the visibility of the issue and the opportunity to do something right. Working with Marathon, the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, the Bureau of Land Management, and the Nature Conservancy allows us to really see how a project can be done successfully and bring that success to other watersheds. One of the major benefits is we on the corporate side are spending time with those on the Nature Conservancy side 
And we're sharing our opinions and our views and our time and our efforts. We're sharing ourselves with people that sometimes I think it's perceived that we are adversaries. Everybody has, has a role and a job and a, and, a, and a goal that they need to attain and, and we get there a lot easier, more effectively and more efficiently as a partnership. The more of these sorts of things, the better in BLM. On the local level, we always, always appreciate it and invite it. We love the fact that Marathon is very excited about working in this area and is very excited about conservation and we hope to be able to partner with Marathon on many more projects like this. By December 2008, we expect to be done with a nine-year project in the San Miguel watershed and we are really excited about looking for another watershed to focus our attention and this collaborative strategy to help uh, improve the health of, of, one of what is our most important resource, our water.